And President Biden is faced with pressure from within his administration as Israel begins its operation in Rafah. One America's chief White House correspondent, Monica Page, has the details. I'm speaking with Israeli government spokesman David Menser. David, we know the offensive into Rafah has begun to weed out the remaining cells of Hamas and get the rest of those hostages out. And this operation comes after Hamas killed multiple Israeli soldiers this past week. And here at home, the president met with Jordanian King Abdullah as well, where he reportedly pressed Biden on trying to avert this operation. But what does this kind of conversation signal to you? So, look, it's very important that our American uh, colleagues and, you know, the Biden administration has been side by side with us through much of this uh, seven month war. We understand that there are differences now, but we are determined uh, to uproot Hamas uh, from Rafa. We simply ask the question, what would any other democracy do faced with this genocidal murderous organization? We've done a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job in getting rid of most of uh, Hamas from Gaza. We've liberated um, Gaza from Hamas, but there are four battalions remaining. And you can believe in me, Monica, I tell you the mood right here in Israel, as we send our boys and girls back into battle, uh, into face this genocidal murderers, we're going to win because we believe that our cause is just and we believe that people that believe in just causes should be with us as well. Absolutely. And Israel has some of the toughest military, some of the, some of the toughest men and women uh, fighting. And, you know, we pray that God is with them through this entire journey here. David, uh, before we go, I understand the Biden administration halted ammunition shipment to Israel in order to ensure that Israel was using the weapons in accordance with international law. But in turn, this has reportedly left many Israeli officials confused, considering Israel signed off on the compliance just this past March. Uh, however, this decision came short shortly after 88 Democrats signed a letter to Biden expressing serious concern regarding the Israeli government's conduct of the war and its alleged deliberate withholding of humanitarian aid. That's what these Democrats are citing. So is there a reason why some Democrats here in the United States are assuming that Israel is not complying with international law and accusing Israel of withholding humanitarian aid? So that's the propaganda. Uh, let me give you uh, some of the facts. Um, we're getting more aid into Gaza than ever before. Before this war, there are about 70 food, food trucks alone going into Gaza. Uh, every day for the last week or so, there have been about 350 uh, aid uh, trucks going in. The problem of getting aid into Gaza hasn't been about getting it in. The UN, unfortunately, are hopelessly, hopelessly inefficient in getting the, the aid uh, through to people that need it. But we're getting that aid in, you know, so many thousands and thousands of trucks, bakeries which have been opened, the water situation is better than it's ever been. It's very important to remember, you know, the first thing we did as we've done in the past, is we get people out of harm's way. We telephone them, we text them, we uh, drop leaflets, all in Arabic. We make media announcements in Arabic. You know, every single way that we, we can, we give them maps, we keep, and we are precise as we can be as well, Monica. We tell them the streets and the roads which are going to be targeted next. We're going to destroy this genocidal organization and we're going to get the job done. David, I appreciate you breaking this down for us because there's a lot of different kinds of information out there. So David Menser, Israeli government spokesman, thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for clearing that up. And uh, God bless those troops out there. And, uh, you know, we're working every single day to make sure the job gets done and bring every single hostage home. So thank you so much for your time. And thank you to Monica, to all of uh, your viewers, but also all the uh, people in the U.S. that have supported us throughout this seven month uh, conflict. We want it to be over very, very soon. We believe it will be. And we're going to get rid of this terrorist organization to go back to. We want to get back to building better relations with all of our neighbors in this part of the world. Thank you, David. God bless. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.